60 hours into being a Mac user. And I'm not even disheveled. This is great. Coming from Windows, it's actually really not bad at all. Definitely some things that have taken some getting used to, but it's not bad. So let's get into it. I'll start off by saying this. The very first thing that I noticed was the all the touches, all the haptics, right? The keyboard is different. The trackpad is different. I went through the settings, updated a bunch of stuff. Uh, so now the mouse actually moves at a good rate. I don't have to click the trackpad. I can just tap it to click. Uh, and there's some other really, really cool features that the trackpad allows you to do. Super thrilled with those. Um, but I brought down my Samsung laptop for comparison. And right off the bat, this is not the same machine. If this were the same machine as that one, I would have stayed here, but it's not. This machine is more of what I would say extremely consumer grade. I think I got it in 2018 or so. And while it's a great computer, it's not designed for the things that I need to do, which is the reason I bought the Mac. So why did I get this machine? Well, let's talk through the apps and maybe you'll get an understanding. Lightroom Classic, Photoshop, DaVinci Resolve, those are all very heavy, uh, heavy applications that I needed a machine to be able to handle. That's really why. Uh, my photo editing, my video editing that I do, that's what I needed a machine to be able to handle. And that's why I bought the MacBook over just using the Samsung laptop. The Samsung laptop is fantastic for day to day, browsing, email, messaging, whatever. It's fantastic. And when I had a Samsung phone, it was even better because in the same way that Apple has its ecosystem, Samsung kind of has its own and they paired tremendously together. So I've had this now for about 60 hours. What have I done with it? Well, the very first thing I did with it was set it all up, mess with all the settings, get it to about where I think I might want it. Of course, I know inevitably I will modify things as I go. And as I become a heavier user of Mac OS, I'll understand things a bit better. The other thing that I've done with it is I used it heavily with DaVinci Resolve. So as I mentioned before, I was tied to a desk when it came to photo and video editing. I wanted something that I could take out and be mobile with while also having those same capabilities. And this machine gives me that. So Saturday and Sunday, computer arrived Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I actually edited entirely on this machine with a DaVinci Resolve project that I started on my desktop. I exported the project, made sure I had all of the files, and I worked off an SSD the whole time for that particular video. And it worked out tremendously. The other thing I'll say is when I went to go export it and save the draft so I can share with the client and we can get an understanding of, of the direction and, hey, are we going, are we, are we aligned, that kind of thing. It took 35 seconds to render an eight minute video, which is unreal. It would have been about a minute. It was, it was a minute for every minute. So it would have been an eight minute render on my desktop, which turned into 35 seconds over here. That's fantastic. That alone saved me a ton of time, but to be able to take this out and be with my family out at events we needed to do over the weekend and still be able to edit was tremendous. It, literally paid for itself in my mind. It was it, it justified the price in the first 48 hours of owning it. So let's talk, compare and contrast Windows machine to Apple machine. So very first thing is size and weight. It is a 14 inch. This is a 15 inch Samsung. And as you can see, there is a size difference for sure, a size difference. This one is smaller, which means it'll be theoretically easier to transport but it is significantly heavier. This is absolutely the lightest laptop I have ever, ever seen or owned. This one has a little bit of heft to it, but it's really not that bad. Not like uh, my wife has the 16 inch model and that is a tank. It could absolutely be used as a weapon if needed. This is far more manageable. I also plugged this into an external monitor, big 32 inch display that I was using and it worked awesome. Native was cool. The other neat thing was uh, I've got my iPad here and I had my iPad set up next to this laptop while I was setting it up and learning the settings and doing all that. And the fact that I could take the 
trackpad on this and move the cursor from my Mac screen to the iPad screen seamlessly without ever having to pair the two, that was really cool. So I could watch the video on how to set it up and set it up at the same time and use the trackpad to control both. That was really, really interesting. So some things that are going to take some getting used to. The command key, the command Q to get out of an app or a window and actually close it out versus just closing it out at a Windows machine, that is going to take some getting used to. The other thing is uh, on a Windows machine or a trackpad in general, I like to, and I say I like to because it's all I've ever done, grab the bottom of the trackpad and push up. So an upward motion makes the screen go down as if I'm grabbing the screen and physically moving it. Right? I want to look lower, so I'm going to grab low, pull that to hide. Now that part becomes my high point and I'm reading lower. However, when you're using an external mouse, I have found that what that does on the wheel bar, or the little wheel that's in the middle of the mouse, the wheel scroll wheel, it reverses it. So scrolling down is like, hey, I want to scroll down, actually scrolls the page up. And the other way, I'd have to scroll the wheel up to get the page to scroll down. So I've reversed it. And I would much rather, because I truthfully do believe I'm going to be using a mouse, I would say 70% of the time or more while using the laptop for editing purposes. Uh, I want that natural scroll feel on the mouse that I'm used to, which is if I want the page, if I want to see lower on the page, I wheel down. And by inverting it, that allows me to do that. Otherwise, I've got to scroll up. However, what that means on the trackpad is I now have to physically drag down on the trackpad to see lower on the screen, which is counterintuitive to my brain, especially since I still plan on having, keeping, and using the Samsung laptop here, as well as my work laptop, which is a Windows machine. It's actually an HP uh, computer. And yeah, that is going to take some getting used to. So do I like it? Am I happy with my decision, even though it was very expensive? Yes. By far and away, yes. Like I mentioned, I feel like it has already justified the expense in the first 48 hours of owning it. And I am thrilled to be able to go forward with this machine and learn more about it, use it to a, it's a greater potential that it's capable of. Um, yes, I'm very happy with the decision to go from Windows to Mac. Having said that, I'm still going to stay with Windows. So there you have it. The first 60 hours of owning my very first Mac computer being a Windows user for the last 30 something years. It's really not that bad. Yes, there are some quirks. Yes, there are some differences, but it's still a computer. The applications still work the same. Buttons might be in a different place and the workflow or process might be slightly different from one to the other, but I am thoroughly happy with my purchase.